Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another one of our WESC webinars. My name is Josie and I am WESC's marketing advisor. If you can hear me okay before we get going here, could you please let me know in the chat box below? As you can see, there is a chat box and there is a Q&A box as well. So you can use that chat box for things like this, saying, hey, I can hear you just fine, Josie. Um, or you can use the Q&A box for any questions related to today's presentation. For those of you who haven't attended our webinars before, I'd like to quickly mention that WESC webinars are happening every Wednesday and they're on a variety of different topics and they're all geared towards entrepreneurs and small business owners. You can check out wesc.ca slash events for more information on these and how to register. If you haven't yet registered for next week's small business conference, now is the time to do so. Uh, we have virtual panel discussions and interactive workshops happening all week, every day. Um, and I will paste that registration link in the chat once we get started here. Now, as a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing on our small business resources page at wesc.ca slash services slash resources. You'll also receive an email from me tomorrow with a link to the recording, so you can keep an eye out for that. So today our topic is where does your business stand with cybersecurity? and is presented by Chris Fosner, CMO at Complete Technologies. Today's webinar is also part of our Business Growth Luncheon Series, which is offered in partnership with Economic Development Regina and the NSBA. So like I said, if you have any questions during the presentation, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, and Chris will address these questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, I think that's enough from me now. I will hand it over to Chris. Please begin the presentation whenever you're ready. Thank you, Dizzy. Okay, I'll share my screen here. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris from Complete Technologies, and today we're going to do a quick overview of cybersecurity, uh, what what that means, and uh, and why it's important to to your business. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm with Complete Technologies. I'm uh, from Saskatoon here. Uh, I am the CMO, so you might be wondering why a CMO is presenting on cybersecurity, but I do also have over two decades of experience in, in IT. Um, as Josie mentioned, if you have any questions during the webinar, just um, put them in the question and answer chat, and I'll address them at the end of the webinar. We're going to keep it fairly high level. If you have a very detailed question, go ahead and put it in the chat, but we'll probably uh, take that offline after, after the webinar if you have a serious problem or something that you, you need help with, but we'll keep the questions to, to general for this, uh, for this webinar. So where does your business stand with cybersecurity? A lot of business owners feel that um, they're kind of beyond the reach of cyber threats thinking, well, I have a small business and uh, you know, they're going after the bigger fish, so I don't really have anything to worry about. And, and I think we have things kind of okay. But a lot of cyber attacks do happen on small businesses. And the reason for that is because typically the security isn't that good. Um, a lot of small businesses don't have simple things in place like a good reliable backup and small businesses account for a large part of the economy, especially in, uh, in North America. So as I mentioned, a lot of small businesses believe that they're too small, 50% of them, and um, it's simply, uh, simply not true. We see a lot of small businesses being impacted and uh, sometimes they don't pull through when, when they have a major uh, cyber attack. So, so what is your cyber strategy? So one option would be to relocate to a remote mountain like this and be completely disconnected from the world, but it's not really an option for, for most of us. So we want to kind of focus on having a cybersecurity policy and a disaster recovery plan. So the cybersecurity policy is really just a set of rules that you and your team um, write down so that everybody's on the same page. And it could be as simple as training your employees on how to identify an email that um, might not be legitimate. Um, 
often malware and threats are sent as attachments and emails and uh, it's just by an employee opening that email that causes causes an issue um, and then having a disaster recovery plan so you can use as much prevention as you want but when something goes wrong you have to have a plan in place so you can quickly get back up and running um, get your data back online deal with a ransomware event if it does happen because uh, these things probably still will happen. So I've broken it down into three main areas and we'll try and make this cybersecurity as interesting as possible. I know it's not um, a super interesting topic, but it is a very important topic. And uh, it really, most business owners don't put a lot of thought into it until something goes wrong or a colleague of theirs has something that goes really wrong. So the planning phase um, is something that you can do on, on your own. Uh, we, we can make some resources available to you or you can reach out to your IT person or IT company that you're using and ask them to help you with the planning. It's gonna be different depending on the, the business that you're in. Uh, but the, the important thing is that you get the, the basic plan in place and, um, and build out a strategy so everyone's on the same page. Um, this page lists all the, the different things that you might work on. We're not going to go through them, but it's the point is that there, there is a lot to take into consideration. Um, much of it you can do on your own. You don't have to have any IT experience. Uh, for example, you part of your plan might be determining how much data uh, you can lose. So our business is okay if we lose a day of data, an hour of data, that kind of thing. And uh, a good rule of thumb for that is to look at your year and then pick the busiest time of the year, whatever, whatever time of the year that is, and then put yourself in, in that time of year and say, okay, if we were in that busiest time of year, how much data could we lose? Could we lose a whole day and be okay? Um, could we lose a week? And then use that as your, as your benchmark. And then whatever plan you put in place for data recovery will always be focused on that really busy part of your year. So if you're in a slow part of the year, it's still fine. So start by creating a cybersecurity plan and educating your employees on, on best practices. Um, and we'll go through a couple of those, but uh, unfortunately employees are the weakest link because they can't be programmed or controlled with technology. Um, it really boils down to education. And then of course you can put some security measures into place um, like spam filters, um, restrictions on the type of attachments and, and things like that. Um, and uh, the thing you want to avoid is the mindset of that, you know, it hasn't happened yet. I've been in business for 15 years. Why would it happen now? Just, um, just this week, uh, uh, an IT provider in town that hosted many uh, companies, data and programs um, had, a, uh, had a, a, an attack. And so it, it just goes to show that even if you're in the business, um, you can still, you can still get, a, get an attack. And uh, so there, there's nothing you can do to prevent getting attacked, but just make sure that you have things in place so that when it happens, the damage is minimal and, and your business can carry on. The uh, prevention element of it, this is, the, this is where you, um, probably your HR department, your management team, and your IT team, whether it's internal or if you're using um, a contractor or a company to help you with that is where you sit down and you make sure you have the, the measures in place and, um, and the policies in place. And then a big part of this is the, the reporting. So you would want regular reports because as a business owner, you're not gonna have time to go through logs and, and monitor dashboards uh, related to security. You're gonna wanna, you know, in a summary, maybe on a weekly basis saying that, you know, we had a couple threats, but they were stopped by our antivirus. Um, someone opened a file they shouldn't have and we sent them to the module about um, opening email properly, those kinds of things. So prevention, um, it's ongoing and um, you have to keep it up to date um, as things change. So here's again, a list of things that might fall into prevention. And um, there's a lot, um, but you pick the elements that are really important to your business. And again, 
looking at the very high level, simple things that you want to deal with. It's um, education for your staff, some sort of antivirus malware protection, and definitely a backup. And the, uh, the backups um, are the probably the most important part. So you want to communicate with the, um, communicate with everyone on how everything is to be implemented. So make sure that you and your IT team are on the same page. Um, this can be, uh, depending on the size of your business, it can be a fairly um, detailed task and you want to make sure that everybody's on the same page so you're not recreating things that have already been done or missing steps. So creating the plan is half the battle and then uh, communicating it properly so that it actually does get implemented. Again, on the report front, set an expectation for regular security reports. So you might want to um, have this on demand so you as a, a management uh, team member or an owner can, can go into a dashboard and pull up the reports. But it should probably be just as important to you as your weekly financial reports where you would look at the, um, the revenues for the week and you know, your, your cash flows and, and balance sheets. Um, this, these kinds of reports are, are just as important. Um, if you're to think, if you're in a business where computers matter, just imagine if you had no data and you had no computers, um, how would your business function? 60% of small businesses say that um, the employees are the cause of a, of a data breach. And this goes back to just improper education um, being careless, typically with, with email, but it can be other things. If, um, if you allow personal devices in your place of business, they could bring something in from home. Um, we just recently helped um, an energy company deal with a situation where there was some corruption on a laptop that a contractor had. And uh, we don't know exactly how that happened, but it, it could have been their kids playing uh, Minecraft or downloading things from the from the internet. So there's a lot of vectors, a lot of different things that can impact your network. Employees are, are the, uh, the biggest area that you have to monitor and uh, make sure that you educate them properly. And then the, uh, the third part is protection. So um, protection, this is where planning and prevention come together and, it, and it'll look, the elements look a little bit like planning they look a little bit by prevention, but it's it's really um, where the plan comes into play and where the protection comes into play. Um, so uh, here's again a, a large list of, of the different things, but um, an example of protection is um, restoring your backup. So part of your plan is like, we need a backup. We can't have less than um, a day, we can't have more than a day of data loss. So we, we have our, that's our plan for our backup. Um, prevention, we installed some backup software. So our IT team helped us, they set up a backup. We know that all of our important files are, are backed up to a, a local device in the office. And it's also sent over the internet to some cloud storage that is secured. Um, that's a model that we use with all of our clients. Uh, we, if they want to copy locally, we provide them with that. And then um, a secure cloud storage, um, usually at innovation, at innovation place. So that's the prevention. And then the protection is when that malware event does happen or that ransomware event does happen, you simply restore your data and you've already set your backups to be at an allowable uh, time frame of data loss. So whether that's 15 minutes or an hour or a day, you simply restore the data and um, you're fine. One of, the, uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that ransomware, it sounds scary and, and I'll, base, I'll just tell you what it is quickly in case you don't know. So ransomware is when something happens, usually opening something in an email and then a program encrypts all of your data and then you can't get it. It's, uh, it's basically just uh, garbage. You can't use it. It looks like unusable files. And then you get a message saying, send some Bitcoin to an address and then they'll decrypt the files. And usually they do, but you have to pay for it. Now, if you have a good backup, it, uh, that ransomware is, does nothing because you, you simply just delete those garbage files. You restore from your good backup and you're, and you're good to go. Um, if it happens on a workstation that you don't have backed up, you might have to install some programs, but 
your backup plan should make sure that you, at the very least, all of your critical data is, is backed up. Um, are your employees educated on social engineering and, and other threats to your, to your data? So if you're a company that has um, data that's important, which, which is most companies, or if you have private information, so client information that you wouldn't want someone else to get a hold of, you, you really have to put some thought into this. So that information, maybe it leaves your business on someone's laptop, right? Do you have something in place to protect that data if that laptop is stolen? Um, do you have um, education in place so your employees understand that it's important that they um, are careful with devices that, that have your business data on there? In uh, Right here in Saskatoon, a, uh, a large um, real estate company, they were social engineered. Um, so basically some hackers got in through an email and uh, they just kind of watched what was going on in, in the business. And they, they watched the emails that were being sent and they got to know the people in the company by reading their emails and their and emails coming from partners in other parts of the world. And what they ended up doing was they, they put together a, tra a real estate transaction um, from here in Saskatoon that was gonna be carried out in the United States. And the real estate transaction looked very similar to, to things that that company had been doing. Um, but the, uh, the hackers, they didn't know every single procedure that was in place. And they weren't aware that in the United States office, there is a procedure where the, the CFO required um, a handwritten signature on something. So when they pushed the transaction through and it was, it was $250,000, the CFO um, noticed it and, and it, everything looked in order, but there wasn't that signature. So he went to see the CEO and he said, hey, I just want to make sure that we're actually doing this transaction because this document wasn't signed. And the CEO said he had never heard of that deal. And uh, so right then they knew that they had been compromised and it was a matter of going through everything and, and scrubbing their data and getting rid of the threat. Um, so it can be very, it can be very detailed. Um, 68% of small businesses, small and medium businesses have no disaster recovery plan. So if you're to think honestly about your business, uh, what do you have in place to restore your data? If, if right now you just got a phone call that said all of your data was um, encrypted and there was no way to decrypt it, how would you, how would you recover from that right now? Um, so those are the types of things you have to you have to ask yourself. If you have a client database and that client database is stolen, or a, a laptop that has that client database is stolen, what do you, what do you have in place to to protect that? An example would be uh, we help companies um, typically in a Microsoft environment, and there's a technology called BitLocker, and that goes on a laptop. And for our customers, if they if this happens, we can simply um, encrypt that laptop um, so that if, if someone has it, they can actually get at the, at the data. So there's different, that's just an example. There's different things that, that you can do, but it's, uh, it's definitely important to have those, those things in place. Uh, I had mentioned um, that there's a few things happening in Saskatoon. I'm sure everyone here remembers when the, uh, the city of Saskatoon sent um, at least a million dollars to the wrong organization. And that was a, another example of social engineering. So we see this, sometimes it's in the news, a lot of the times it's just in behind the scenes. There's many companies in Saskatoon that have either paid the ransom because they had no backup or they had to rebuild their data, which can be a very, very painful process. So if you don't know how to create a disaster recovery plan, um, at the very least, Google it and, and self-teach your, um, yourself or your team or reach out to your IT partner to, to help you with that. Um, out of everything that we've talked about today, having a good backup and then a plan to get that back in place is so important. Um, a lot of businesses that, that go through a major data loss, they don't make it. They, uh, the data loss and not being able to deal with it in a timely fashion, they, they lose enough business that, they, that their business actually ends up, ends up closing. So it's a very important thing um, to take into consideration. Okay, so that is the, um, 
the end of the the end of the webinar. Um, so I think what I'll do is stop sharing my screen, and we'll go to the questions. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to just go through the questions that are that are in the Q and A channel. Uh, feel free to pop some in there if you, if you have them. So the first one, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, uh, Clarice. Hi, Chris. Just this morning, my insur insurance agent told me I have cyber coverage in my errors and omissions insurance. Will this suffice? I am a coach, author, podcast host, moving almost entirely to a, a virtual space. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, I am not an insurance broker, so I can't answer that question for you, but I, I think the thing to look at is the coverage that, that's included. So you have to determine what uh, amount of money you would need in the event that you lost all of your, your data. So what would, what would the cost be to keep things running and to um, report, or replace all that, all that information? So um, you might want to just double check with your, your agent on that. And then, uh, and then you should be able to figure it out from there. Like for, for us, because we're an IT firm, our insurance is a little bit heavier because we're handling other companies' data as well. So we have to make sure that we can not only cover something um, that impacts us, but also our customers. Okay, um, another one from uh, Corliss. Uh, you mentioned backups. What specifically are you referencing? Okay, so with um, backups, um, basically this is software that will back up all of your all of your data. So if you are um, an individual sole proprietor with just a computer and a laptop, um, that might be as simple as using Dropbox. And uh, but if you're a company with multiple employees you might want to employ a more advanced backup solution. We use something called Veeam. And uh, Veeam is just the name of it. It's just a, a very robust backup solution. So we'll back up servers and workstations um, locally onto uh, a separate device. So that device cannot be ransomware. And then we also send it off site so that they're protected from theft of that device or if their office were to burn down, they have their data somewhere else and we can actually create a virtual environment and restore all their data so they can access remotely and and function as if they were in their office on, on their on their live system. So the backup, it really depends on the size of your business, but as long as you feel comfortable that every file you need to run your business, you have a second copy of it somewhere where you can get it, then that would be a good backup. And you have to determine the, uh, the frequency uh, again, I like as a rule of thumb, I typically tell businesses, look, your busiest time of year, figure out how much data you could lose, 15 minutes, one hour, whatever it is, and then set up your backup plan to handle that so that anytime during the year, if you lose your data, you, you get it back at that time frame and you should be fine. Okay. Um, Google Drive, Dropbox. Oh, do you recommend um, a website be backed up? Uh, definitely. So I didn't really go into websites that much in the presentation, but if your website is important to your business, which it is for a lot of businesses now, is not only do you want it backed up, you want to make sure that you have some sort of malware scanning on your website. Um, you want to make sure someone's updating it. So a lot of people will use WordPress for their website. And uh, because of that, WordPress is um, a target for hackers. So you might install different plugins and hackers are always trying to figure a way to compromise WordPress websites. So you have to make sure that you're always updating your website and you definitely want to back it up. And uh, if you manage your own website, a lot of smaller businesses uh, might be managing their own website. Um, always back up your website before you make any changes to it as well. That's just a good practice. So you can always go back to your, your backup. Um, antivirus, what's the best antivirus protection? Uh, there's a lot of products out there. Um, we 
we use a certain product bundled with our management suite. But really, if you were to just Google top five Anubaris software um, and then pick the one that matches your operating system, Windows or, or Mac, uh, any of those would be fine. Uh, the, the number one Anubaris is kind of like the number one car. It depends on who is reviewing it. And, uh, you know, I think there's a little bit of bias in the, in the industry when it comes to that. But if you stick to something in the, in the top uh, five, you'll be fine. Um, can you describe how you use BitLocker to encrypt a laptop? Okay, so um, BitLocker is uh, something um, that comes with uh, Microsoft um, Office 365. And the, uh, it's set up with that when you, you have a company environment, um, you set up something called a uh, policy. And the policy basically applies to anybody who logs into the company network. So we uh, set up the computers, they log into the network. They might have a server, they might be operating off the cloud. Either way, um, the policy basically says, um, okay, this laptop is protected and, uh, and the, the data on there can be encrypted. You can even do things like not allow copying data onto um, a USB drive or attaching certain attachments to emails. You can block it even at, at that level to protect your to protect your data. And then uh, a common way to do it is the BitLocker would have a threshold of so many failed password attempts and the data is, the data is encrypted and um, it, can't be, it can't be accessed. So it's really, um, the BitLocker is probably one of the more extreme examples, but there are businesses where, where that does matter. Um, we have businesses that have uh, private information on laptops, so they want that. They don't want that getting in the hands of anyone. Um, we have businesses that, that have trade secrets and, um, you know, proprietary information that they wouldn't want other competitors or anyone to get a hold of. So we use it in those scenarios as well. Okay. Um, I think that is it in the Q&A. And I'm just looking in the chat and I don't think there's any other questions in the chat. Um, are you there, Josie? Yeah, that looks like that's it for questions. If you have any more, feel free to throw them in while I'm still talking. But I think with that, Chris, we can wrap it up. Okay. Um, thanks so much for the great presentation today. It's a very fitting topic for the times we're in, and I'm hoping everyone who attended learned a lot today. Um, thanks for those of you who joined us today. Um, you'll be receiving an email from us tomorrow with the link uh, to watch this on demand. So take a look for that in your inbox. It'll be around this exact time tomorrow. And you'll also be able to find this on our small business resources page. As a reminder too, don't forget to register for our small business conference next week. The link is in the chat there if you're interested. And with that, I will let everybody go and get back to their days. Uh, bye everybody and have a great afternoon. Bye, thanks everyone.